Hey guys, welcome back to Best Village. We have a special guest here with us today. Hi everyone. Hi Kitty. Hi Kit. What's Hi up Jay. guys? Jay's here too. I'm sitting right in the middle, Which so I feel like I'm getting all the vibes. Do so you want to introduce yourself? I mean, Jay and I have never introduced ourselves. Yeah. But do you want to do a little like five second elevator pitch? Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I need an elevator pitch, but... I'm Kit Keenan, born and raised in New York City, born and raised in the West Village. More importantly. It's two to one Welcome to Best Village with two West Village girlies and one new addition to the West Village. Do you want to just take my spot on the podcast? Um, Yeah, honestly, I should. (laughs) And I do social media full time for work. I do a lot of recipe development and cooking stuff and then lifestyle. And Ruby's my best friend. Jay is. is a very close friend of mine. And my one of my only male friends. So well, this is going to be so fun. That. We also have a lot of great conversations. We always say that the best type of friends talk about ideas rather than other people. And I feel like we all do that pretty well. So I'm excited. I know you guys all rolled your eyes at that one. But trust me, it's true. I promise. Well, um, it's an Eleanor Roosevelt We also quote. talk about people, obviously. People are so juicy. Yeah. But... I, I agree. It's apparently it's like uh, things, people, ideas, or maybe it's like there's three levels to it. Yeah, it's like small minds. I talk feel like about, it should be people, things. That's ideas. what it is. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor quote? Roosevelt. Ellie. That's who my high school Rose. is named after. Ooh. Jay is steering the ship today. Oh, okay. So I can do that. should we just jump in? I don't know if it's in? a good idea. We also, we had a cookie exchange this week. A cookie exchange is something that my family has done for years. It's basically where everyone in your friend group comes with a baked good or a cookie. And then you exchange them and everyone goes home with a collection of everyone's best baked goods. And so we had kind of like a preview of this podcast earlier this week and we added some topics of combo to the list except what happened was all the cookies just stayed at my house can we get a picture of the cookies that's just like overlay my my face you guys just right over here okay slay perfect oh by the way slay is still in the rotation of words wow it's got some longevity to it i know it's outlasting vibes it can be used in any situation i think vibes are kind of out well, I was. Using I mean, I've vibes. definitely used that word once already in this podcast, but Slay is just like here, and it's not going anywhere. I'm yeah. sorry, everyone. Okay. It's universal. Uh, to to riff on that, the, mm-hmm. the the cookie night was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Kit. It was really cute. And the reason we wanted to bring Kit on is because every time we hang out, we have such good conversations. We can go deep. We can go shallow. We can talk about people, things, ideas, all of it. Can't argue and it kind of all just meshes in. It's yeah. great. So this should be a pretty easy one. Mm-hmm. I'm steering the ship, but I'm really just, I'm really just rolling with it. Uh, there's a lot of hot takes on here this week. Let's start with a hot take. Like how hot do we want? Let's For, start. Let's start with a really hot take. I was gonna okay. say burn us. Yeah. This one is very controversial. Controversial. I think everyone's gonna hate me for saying this, but it's okay. I'm gonna take it. I, we talked about this before. I'm anti-traveling. Okay. I think that's so (laughs) ridiculous, but I'll let you. Which is exactly why I wanted to bring it up today. Cause I I want to flesh out my position. Mm -hmm. And Kit is like the antithesis of the anti-traveler. Also you travel very well though. You get in and out so efficiently. Well, I think I, my mom is like really the big travel girl and I feel like she has encouraged my sister and I our whole lives to value seeing the world over material things and I feel like being able to travel is such a gift I also think it helps open your eyes to different networks outside of like where we grew up and the people that we grew up around so I'm very grateful for that but then also I think just like the nature of my work is that I travel a lot for work so I can't really be anti-travel even if I wanted to which I don't so even if I lay out the perfect argument yeah there's just no way yeah I will disagree with it regardless but 
let's hear it. Okay, let's hear it. Well, first of all, for context, I traveled a lot last year. So I was a yes man to traveling last year. Mm -hmm. This year I tried out being a, a no man, a no man mm -hmm. traveling. And my reasoning was I noticed that my, what makes me happy is friends and a strong community in the place that I live, like a base of friends that I've gotten to the point where I'm super deep with and very intimately close with and build stuff with, as we talked about, link and build. Link and build. Link and build. Just my the favorite. just the meme of the year for me. Link and build. And I've been building a lot of stuff with my friends. I don't know how I do like the friend work. We'll talk about that. It's later, one but. for um you for you and for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's interesting. But I've noticed that if I on years where I travel a lot, my friend group kind of takes steps back or is like static, is like you know, kind of the same. And years where I say no to traveling my friendships grow deeper. I meet new people and the momentum from staying and saying yes to things that are in the city mm -hmm. is like compounds. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that when I travel, I'm expecting all this like this like perspective change and like my eyes to be open and all these new ideas to rush in. And that just doesn't happen. Like the friendships that I make abroad or wherever, they don't last. I can barely stay in touch with my friends that live in like, I don't know, on the east side. Mm -hmm. And, and, I'm not actually a different person when I come back, even though I would like my eyes are a little bit more open seeing like the European way of life and whatever, seeing other countries. But I don't actually, w the things that change me much more are friends yeah, and the, their ideas and their perspectives, some of which are international. To be fair, I have a lot of international friends, like my best friend's Italian, my other best friend's Canadian. I just think you're like, you're not thinking of the value of travel outside of, just friendships like for me I do think expanding my network outside of just my circle in New York City like I have a best friend from college who I went to Greece with this summer and it's not she's not someone that I speak to every day I don't yeah. think like we have cultivated this like super in-depth friendship from just like seeing each other all the time but when I do see her we have amazing conversations that are very deep and being able to see She's from Greece and being able to see where her family's from, meeting her entire family, hearing their way of life and the way that they think about the world over a week of travel. Like, what did I miss in the city that week? Like, going to American Bar, you know? Like, I, I think there... It doesn't have to be so black and white. It's not that if you... Are if you take a few trips during the year, you're gonna like lose all your friends at home or you're gonna like miss out on these deep friendships. I also think what we were talking about before is like this idea that I have a few very deep relationships in my life, like with my friends, my family, and I don't know how much further I can give to a, like more friends. I. I have, like, I'm always down to meet new people. And there are people that kind of have crossed over that, like, service level friendship into a deeper friendship over the past few years. But I kind of am, like, very comfortable with the depth of relationships that I have in my life right I now, besides that, romantic. I think that that's, like, a very unique thing to you. And I think that, that, like, you're so lucky that you have the people in your life. You're like, these are my people and these are the people I prioritize. Yeah. And then other, not to say it's like good or bad, but other people like want to continue to deepen every single relationship in their life. Mm -hmm. And when you're at like the impetus of a friendship, those first couple months are very important as mm -hmm. opposed to when you're in a long-term friendship. Like, like you said, like if you miss a week, it's okay. Cause mm -hmm. like you'll cack, you'll see them when you get back and you'll yeah. catch up as opposed to when you're meeting someone like new every single week, like if you then don't see them for like a week, then they go another direction. And it's like, what are you prioritizing? Is it expanding your mind traveling or is it expanding your social circle? But you're also you're expanding, you're also expanding your network when you travel. Like I'm always meeting new people that I can then like tap back into or like ask certain things of, or, you know, travel to different places with like, I'm expanding my network network outside of like the West Village 
or like the people that I grew up with here in the city or people that I just meet through work or whatever. Like I've actually expanded my network more through New York outside of New York. You also didn't grow up outside here. of New York, if that makes sense. I'm I'm wondering like you didn't grow up here, so like yeah. for you you've traveled to this place and to this point in your life. That's true. Mm-hmm. For someone like Kit like because she's always been here, the idea of leaving and coming back is that Yeah, expansion. that's true. For you guys it's a little different cuz you guys yeah. grew up here. I also I just feel like New York is the best city in the world and one of very few city in, cities in the world where you can actually make a lot of new friends and mm-hmm. like genuine friends. It's the best city in the world for that, I think. I, I moved here three years ago and I have so many new, and I'm, you know, over 30 and I have so many new friends I always forget that are that. genuine <laughs> friends. I know. Uh, so many new friends that are genuine friends. And it, it's hard to do that out, even out, outside of college yeah. to make genuine new friends. And the, the speed, even especially this last year of how many amazing people I've met is you just can't do that anywhere else. Two things I want to add to this conversation. One, I think there's a value to travel that is more about self-growth as well. I think like getting outside of your routine and your comfort zone is extremely important for self-growth. That's true. And travel basically forces that on you. Um, And then additionally, I think there is a cap on how many like super deep friendships you can actually have. Well, if you want to be a successful person that has time, like time to rest, time to work on your business and time to like grow personally, you, you just don't have time for endless have, deep friendships. Have you heard of the Dunbar limit? Have, no. Garrett, can you pull up Dunbar limit? It's like a hundred. It's not even deep friends. It's like 150 friends, period. That you can really only like handle. Yeah. yeah. At a time. And the idea of like how social media comes into play at that, like at what point are the people you're interacting with on social media kind of. How social media changes the Dunbar limit. Yeah. And how like which of those people are your actual friends and which are people that you're kind of watching the way you would watch a television show. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can have endless relationships and an endless network. I think that's pretty much there's like no cap on that. And I strive to have a huge network of people um I think however something, sorry to cut you off but we talk about is what's the definition of friendship yeah and like how something that kit and i have always discussed is that we define the word friend differently yes yes i'll be like that's a friend of mine and you'll mm-hmm. be like oh that's someone i know and we have the same level of quote-unquote friendship to yeah them. yeah yeah And where that also comes into play and like, is there a difference between a work friendship and Mm -hmm. like a truly like solely social friendship? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Individuals. This is pretty old. This needs to be updated. I feel like Dunbar. The notion that there is in the world of Instagram and TikTok. I guess they're not really friends. It has to do with like the the size of your brain, apparently, which is pretty Mm -hmm. wild. But anyways, I know this is a hot take. Traveling is obviously a lot of fun, and I'm sure I'll travel a lot more next year. But it has been very rewarding and eye-opening to just totally double down on cultivating new friendships. And it's less about missing one weekend at American Bar with existing friends. It's more about the momentum at the beginning that you need. And there's like a New York Times post about the ingredients uh, that go into new friendships, like how to make new friends. Mm -hmm. Not that anyone in New York really needs that, but it's a lot of it's like like serendipitously running into them without planning. Like it's like, yeah, consistency, stuff like that. Anyways, we'll pull that up too. I almost would rather like move somewhere for a while. Like if I really liked a certain area, like let's just say I really wanted to explore Sweden and the Swedish way of life, Mm -hmm. I would almost want to just like move there for a summer. Like that's why I love like when we like Montauk this summer, we just, we parked ourselves in that world. We fully absorbed it. We like got everything that there was to get there. We met every, every, all the locals. We like were playing kickball mm-hmm. with um, people that live there and just like got into the community. I think living in so living in Montauk this summer for me was one of the first times I lived out of New York City mm-hmm. for an extended amount of time since college. And being in Montauk, like not that I was like alone, but I was there during the week when like a lot of people are just there on the weekends. Like even Kit had to go back to the city for work more often than I did and like 
being there alone, I was forced out of my comfort zone Mm -hmm. and forced to like make new friends. Like even Kit and I were walking on the beach one day and we were like, let's, we need like the guy version of us. And like, Oh yeah. Tell that story. That's funny. We put Jay and Justin in a group chat Mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, you guys are like now our friends. And like, while we had known each other, like since like, let's just call it January. Like I feel like that impetus really like changed the trajectory of our friendship and like the fact that we did invite you to come play kickball and everything and like really bring you into our Montauk world. Mm -hmm. Justin and I were very confused at first. Really? What do you think it was? You thought that we were like setting you up? Yeah. I thought you wanted something. Wow. What would I want from you fools? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Like seriously. I don't know how much we have. Uh, I thought it was something, I don't know. I don't know what we thought it was, Mm -hmm. but it was a very pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you guys found your equals. Yeah. I don't know about that. I'm glad you found your (laughs) stepbrothers. Okay. Sure. Okay, guys. So what does it mean when you're added to somebody's close close friends list? I'm going to give a couple of examples and then we can jibber jabber. Okay. I, when it comes to a guy adding you, does it mean like you're a girl? Does it mean that like he is friend zoning you or like he's flirting with you and wants you in your life, in his life, like even more? Because like as a girl, like I would never add a guy that I like to my close friends. Like if you're if you're a guy and you're on my close friends, like I completely only see you as a friend. Yeah, I think it depends on what you share on your close friends. Jay, speak from the male. Close friends makes no sense to me. It's very, it's very unspoken. It's an unspoken thing. No one really talk, talks about close friends. Mm-hmm. So I don't think, I don't think people use it the same way. It's used in lots. Of, I I use it in a really weird way. I just post everything on close friends. Yeah. So it means if I add you to my close friends, it means nothing. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think it depends on the person and what they share on their close friends. Like, I don't really ever use close friends. So me adding, first off, I wouldn't be seeing anyone that I would like add to my close friends that's like an ick for well, me i know that girls that's an ick for you put guys on their close friends in a flirty way that is so crazy to me and like to like show that like look i'm opening up more of my life to you or like oh like i want to know that you're watching my instagram story okay that's kind of oh, that kind of makes sense actually like for the analytics of it all Wait, do you get extra analytics from close friends well no because like for me i i can't look at my story views like, oh my gosh, that's true. I, I can barely get that. through mine. Like there, I would never sit there and scroll through. And check every single yeah. one. Yeah. So, me adding, I might have actually done that one time to see. Remember, we were talking to someone like a year ago, and who is like a, over like hundred thousand followers. Yeah. And she was like, whenever I post a story that I want a boy to see, like I then post on my close friends like something super random. Yeah. So like I can know like if he made it that far. Yeah. I find this, like, what people do on Instagram to, like, investigate a guy, how much a guy likes them, or just investigation on Instagram in general. Mm-hmm. It's such an interesting topic. Wait, so the guy I'm seeing called me, t- FaceTime me this morning. And we were talking, and he goes, I need to admit something to you. I muted you on Instagram. And what? I was like, oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Like... I'm so happy because I don't use Instagram for that purpose. Like my Instagram, my social media in general, it's your business. It is my business, it is my work and it is for the girls. Like I don't want a guy that I'm seeing to be like seeing me talk about my favorite hair products. Like Why did he, he meet just, you though? See, I want a guy because that I'm seeing to respond to every I'm single one of my stories. I'm probably the only person that he follows that like posts consistently. Like I'm posting many many stories a day that I'm I would be there like every single time and I told him I don't want you to look at my social media because I don't want it to like first off I don't really talk I'm going against what I am about to say but I don't really talk about dating that much like my brand Instagram isn't about kit dating isn't like lifestyle I feel kit, like you should not mute, yeah. like, I feel like I feel like you shouldn't mute you still though it's just about like, I, I felt up on his so feed. much relief from really? that because I want to be able to. Maybe if you talked about it before. What? Maybe if you talked about it before. Yeah, I have talked about they it. Have. Okay. I have talked about it and said, "Do not look at my TikTok." Somebody sent him my TikTok 
that I made like talking about some event that I was going to and I knew he was going to be there and I like said some comment about like having to look good because the guy that I was seeing was going to be there and someone sent it to him and I was like don't watch that video like I just don't like I want to be able to most people have the ability to control the person that they are around a new romantic partner when you have social media and you share everything about your life online it's like that the person the people that you're dating have like a vip tell all tell all access to you when you don't have the same for them and it kind of like changes the power dynamics then for sure like i don't get to see him sitting at the office all day and like what he's doing like that's true i don't know it, i don't think he should be able to yeah that's true your persona online and offline are different absolutely personas yes <laughs> let's talk about that okay um is this right now, which persona do we have right now for the record i mean you guys definitely have a little bit of a more personal you kind of i'm seeing you guys are seeing the more personal side to me because I'm with two people that I'm very comfortable with. But I think that I have, I have two personas. One is like my internal world and my personal life. And one is my work self. And it's an alter ego that I call Instagram kit. Ruby named her. I named her. Um, you named her? I named her. Well, it, was, yeah. it came from PR Ruby. We used to be like my alter ego. Like all these kind of alter egos. How do you keep track of it? I've kind of well, I've only, I only have two. Yeah, you only have welded two. Welded PR Ruby into like regular Ruby mm-hmm. at this point. That's why I'm so fucking regular that ribs. shit crazy. Mm-hmm. Regular Rubes. Yeah, when they when they combine it, there's just an explosion. I think you have another alter ego though, with like dating and your romantic life that I don't. Yeah, have. you do. You have at least three personas. Tell me about them. I think you have. Yeah, let's walk. I think them. you have Ruby, and then I think you have romantic Ruby. Can we have get a public apology from all three of them? No, no. I have no. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to apologize for. I think you only have two because PR Ruby has become Ruby. Your work and your personal are, are one, the same thing. and then your romantic life is another persona. How would you like one? Give me a one liner. How would you say that like regular Ruby and romantic mm-hmm. Ruby differ from one another? Romantic Ruby is literally batshit crazy oh my god <laughs> and like on one constantly constantly tweaking so true i'm and constantly like really like pushing boundaries yeah like i like but just like off the rocker completely i, I just don't like think show when gu- my crazy immediately i don't yeah. think guys that you date have ever dated someone like you yeah but you know what's crazy like they- you've never dated somebody like any like what do you mean I don't think that's true. I think there's like people that are more similar. Like Ruby's out of left field. Like if if a guy's dated I've never dated two people who I feel like are the same. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you just like I think there's like a I've half never a dozen dated to a dozen archetypes that- of guys. Like there's like the kind of frat bro, there's like the finance bro, there's like there's these like archetypes and they're like it's not a clean fit, but they're like fuzzy bound, fuzzy categories. I've literally never dated two people who. Do you categorize people in general? I think you have to categorize people. And so do you think you don't date the same category twice? Never. Ruby does. <laughs> not Ruby even dates the really. the same category every time. I don't think these two most recent are even similar at all. I think they are exactly the same thing in, two, in like the opposite of ways. That is so confusing. I think one is true. like so boring and the other one has like a cool life and a job that you find interesting. I mean, I have like run from one type of person. Yeah. I think they're all I think they're all cool. It's just more so something that Kit and I talk about in terms of me being crazy, guys, just to circle back to that, is that like when in my dating life I put my crazy out on the line like immediately. And I'm just like, if you accept my crazy, like, then we can move on. Which is basically the opposite of most people's dating strategies. Mm -hmm. That's what Kit says. Yeah, Yeah, I think I hide a lot of my crazy to begin with. And then over time, like, people see it. And then they might be a little bit shocked by it. And I have to kind of explain myself. Do you have crazy? 
Oh, absolutely. I'm extremely avoidant and like have that sometimes unfortunate practices when it comes to dating because I'm so avoidant. So, and like I will isolate myself or something like, and literally ghost someone that I've been seeing for like a month. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's, that's a is different that crazy? form of, it, yeah, that's, it's like crazy avoidant. Yes. But is there like on the other but side I, of like, that, is there crazy? I also have like a lot of kind of strong boundaries, which honestly are starting to change over time. But I have a lot of strong boundaries from previous relationships about like not, I don't like having sleepovers. I don't like on Sundays, I never see the people that I'm dating because I like have to have my alone time on Sundays. Like I have a lot of crazy like boundaries that I set. Crazy boundaries. That people kind of have, I'm just like, this is what it is and accept it or leave it. Because I have no boundaries. Yeah, you guys are you guys are similar, but you're also opposites. Something I say about me and Kit is that in all the ways we're similar, we're extremely similar. In all the ways we're opposite, we could not be more different. Mm-hmm. This is the paradox podcast because we're we're diving into all these paradoxes. I honestly don't think we're that similar. In the ways we're similar, though, yeah. we are like yeah. so. Like I think when it comes to work and like the way we like navigate new ideas and like mm-hmm. our challenge challenging ourselves whatever but even so like in that way you're so much more outgoing and like so much more go-getter sometimes that's not necessarily true it's just my work is more social than yours but she's a social she's a social media influencer yeah but that consists of me being alone all day and talking to a screen and like it can like so interesting because it's the most social thing in some ways is you're broadcasting to so many people. Yeah. But it's also kind of not. Oh my God. It's like literally the perfect job for me. Like it's genuinely, I could not have chosen a better career path for like me and my picadillos. Kit, you are one of the most deep people that I know. And we have really deep conversations. Okay, thank you. But I've never that's a compliment I've never heard before in my it life. It wasn't immediately obvious that you had so many layers of depth and could get so deep in conversation. You had that realization on August first. Oh my god. You are <laughs> an almanac. I mean, I, it was August first, we were at American Bar. It was day two of Ruby's birthday affair. Oh, you know so everything, fun. Ruby. And the Three of us and Justin was it Justin? Yeah, probably. Ruby yeah. has a photographic memory. Yes, you're memory. right. I, I, if I had a photographic memory, I'm just I know dates really well. Like I see my whole life as a calendar. Okay, you have like a numeric, a schedule yeah. memory, something. Um, I don't we know were at American Bar and we had like a very deep conversation about something. We also talked about X that night. I'll never forget it. So it was both shallow so and deep at the same yeah. time. See, I don't Common remember theme. what we talked about. I just remember where we were and what we were. We talked about a book you were reading. Doing. I forget the name, but it was really deep. Anyways, that does that come out on your persona, your online persona, that side of you? Um, not as much, just because I a lot of my content is short form. So I feel like you can't really get that side of me unless you know you sit down and have a conversation with me. But I think people are. I'm, I feel like I'm complimenting myself with this, but I don't even mean to. I think people are sometimes surprised at how self-aware I am. Like, I will get comments about certain ways that I've chosen to go with my career, and all of those are conscious choices. Like, often I get criticized for the way, like the ways that I've chosen to go on The Bachelor or certain brands that I decide to work with, including like Amazon, Target, some of these more mass market brands. And that those are all conscious career choices for me because I, I think pe- people assume because I grew up in sort of like a luxury fashion space that I would have gone more of that route. And I've just never wanted my brand to be that. I think because I grew up with someone who license their name to a TJ Maxx. Um, And my mom finds a lot of value in 
marketing to a more mass audience, I've seen how much that means to her. And when we meet people and they say they are able to afford afford her clothes and to buy into her brand because of her license with TJ Maxx, I've always been like, I've always seen the value in that. Are you sad, Ruby? Am I sad? Yeah. I'm definitely having a low week of sorts. Can everyone tell by my outfit? I think yeah. your outfit is so cute. Yeah, but normally I'm like, your hoodie doesn't yeah. we are actually kind of like wearing similar outfits in in our own the fonts. fonts. Like your outfit is so you. I feel bad for the people listening, but your outfit is so you, and my outfit is so you guys. Me, but they're both just all Anyone black who's outfits. Just listening has seen me in this outfit before. Yeah, I'm well, in your a mad, you're mad happy, happy sweatshirt and a hat mm-hmm. to a restaurant, mm-hmm. and nothing else has ever been. Different. I do think it's very important. I've been thinking about this a lot to have a uniform, and obviously, like you know, Steve Jobs, there's very successful people that, that have chosen to go more of a uniform route. And even like the suit, uh, being a professional and wearing a suit every day, um, not to keep like, you know, but I think for me, some people's uniform is a white t-shirt and black slacks. I mean like, yeah, I know very successful people that wear a black t-shirt every single day. And for me, I feel like I can't do that because part of my brand is like to show my outfits and my my clothes. Um, and I think it's good to keep it fresh. But I do have uniforms of sorts, like what I'm like wearing today. Yeah. I mean, I have a uniform of sorts, like Mad Happy sweatshirt, mm-hmm. some kind of like basic bottom, yeah. some kind of hat. Yeah. And like colorful sneakers that match the hat. Mm-hmm. You do. Have, you have a formula. Margo sure. was yelling at me the other day because I, she's like, you need to stop wearing like baggy pants. Yeah, I. But I, I totally embrace your style. Thanks, guys. I don't. Jay agrees with Margo agree for with Margo. the petition that I should dress up more. Well, I love dressing up. Like it's I actually it. it's my literally favorite thing in my, the world. Like I love when I have gorgeous hair. Mm-hmm. Everything else I don't care about. Why? I'm. I but feel you uncomfortable. Care. I no, feel I, like you do care. I I think your outfits are amazing. They're just I not just like. I don't like to like dress up like black tie. Yeah. I feel my most secure self like, in more of a fit. That's like a sweatshirt, <laughs> than I do in like a long dress. Yeah. Or even like, a brandy tank top and jeans. Oh, throwback. Yeah. Kid hates that. That I hate more because it's just not interesting. Whereas, like, I feel like when you are in a more streetwear look or something that, like, other people wouldn't consider dressing up, I think it's at least more interesting than just, Well, like, like, there is thought behind what I wear. I'm not just, like... Yeah. Putting on whatever I see first. Yeah. But I do think having a uniform is a great way to minimize the amount of decision making you have to do and decision fatigue yeah i have decision fatigue big time oh my god i have no i really 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 try to limit my decision fatigue as this week has been a low for me Mm -hmm. can everyone tell yeah this is a perfect transition into that go for it sad is among us which I feel like it needs a better, like, what sad stand well, the, the acronym is great, but like the actual seasonal, seasonal affective, affective disorder, disorder, like just talk, say, so it should have I, the word depression Interestingly in it. enough, my seasonal depression, yeah. put that in quotes because it's never been diagnosed, more comes in June than it does during the winter. Really? Like every June I have a major, I wonder if it'll happen this year, but I have a major I, low. What, last year it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Like, it wasn't as bad as the year prior, yeah. but, like, I wasn't, like, so into it. Like, yeah. I wasn't... I but was I remember, non-talk. like, heading up to, like, on the come up to June, we were like, oh, God, Ruby's going down. Yeah, like, we were <laughs> whatever, very, like, it's time. So and then once it got there, I feel like you were more prepared this year and, like, yeah. kind of avoided also, it. Also, I made some, like, big changes. Like, that's when, like, I moved to Montauk. Like, I wasn't mm-hmm. doing my same routine. Like, mm-hmm. we worked on it, but... I find the spring to summer transition harder almost than the 
fall to winter or like being in winter. I, yeah. I know there's some people like that. My co-founders like that. I'm literally so I'm the, the opposite. opposite of that. There's a there's a weekend around around now, around like early December or something like that, where the sun starts to set so absurdly early, like mm -hmm. in the th with a three handle, like three fifty. I something. mean, we're in like the long, the shortest day of the year is December twenty first. So we're, yeah. we're and it's just like so reach, bad. It's like three that. something, and you're like, oh my god, it's already getting dark. Where your brain is just like, something is not right. Yeah. This is not good. Like impending doom. And I've just noticed over the past whatever, five to ten years that that weekend, my friend, I start like feeling weird and acting a little crazy. My friends start acting a little crazy. Like there's like, especially the people that are a little bit less mentally stable or like prone to depression. Why are you calling just, me out like that? <laughs> <laughs> I see it to myself too, but like there's this one weekend where like it's like Mercury's in retrograde. Everyone's just behavior is just wild. Yeah. Which makes me think that everyone is vitamin D deficient, which is true. Yeah. Do you take vitamin D every day? More. Kit? I love vitamin D. You love vitamin D? Mm hmm. You just chug it. What do you about you, Ruby? I don't take vitamin D. Okay, we're going to get you some vitamin D. The only thing I've been ever responsible enough to take every day is my Prozac. That's like beyond the fact that I've been doing that. I'm like, I didn't know it was possible for me to like be that consistent with something. I think there's a lot of like good things to come from getting into supplements. I just like, like getting, being aware of what you're deficient in and mm -hmm. take some time. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have New Year's resolutions? I have two. Tell what us. What one's that? My first one is more career orient oriented, but it's not but, and it is to totally get over my imposter syndrome. I some I have major doubt in my successes and like what I'm able to do and I feel like everything comes really easily to me and so I don't deserve anything I have. Mm -hmm. And my second is more personal and it is to stop dating unavailable men. In every I am so way of that word. Here Physically, for that. emotionally. It's kind of a slay. However I am you define so the word here for that. Available. Mm -hmm. Or non-available. I'm only. But they're so interesting, though. They're so interesting. Wait, wait, wait. What? what was the we? So we played this game. Because I only date at, unavailable men at cookies. We all know that. And basically, we were we were asking, we were going around and saying like, what is your ick or what what is something you don't ick? like about the people? Like, yeah, what's your ick? And Ruby was like, available availability, emotional emotional availability, and everyone no. like kind of laughed at that. And it's unfortunately true in your case, but I feel like that it's we kind of true. we kind of talked about how like it is a thing for women. I feel like it is totally a thing. I feel like most people in general, not even having to do with gender, are interested in well, they can get people, yeah, in people who are okay, more withholding just because, because it, there's is something to change. Emotionally unavailable doesn't mean that you can't like have them. It's it just kind of like, does by definition almost. But you can still have them. It just like isn't like easy. No, or that's possible. not that's not true. I don't think that that's That's this not is, true. Okay, we're getting to the core of it right fully, here. This is a true belief of yours that we need yeah. to like dismantle. Yeah, this is actually great. This is perfect. I can change them. Guys. This is live therapy. This is live you, group therapy. You'll never like. get to the true core of the person if they are emotionally unavailable. I see that as a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you okay, know well, what are you going to do to achieve that resolution? You yeah, that's a great question. Off. Yeah. Well, how do you just get over imposter syndrome? Like, what's your plan? Um, it's easy to say, but hard to execute, I feel like. Which, uh, it's a great resolution. I think it's just affirmations, kind of. Like, continuing to... Or even if I can't get over it, I'm going to stop letting it hold me back. Like, I turn things down... I self-preserve like I won't accept like a paid position because I don't feel like I deserve it mm. I'll just like hang out and do the work how anyway. is that possible I'll always I, accept a paid position no I have so, no it's really bad so different I'm just realizing it's really how different bad. you guys are like crazy. I'm right now like for fun like helping whatever run like their influencer marketing mm-hmm I should totally be paid, and I'm just like, it's fine. I'll just do it because it's fine. 
and it comes easy to me. I, I do think that's like both a superpower and a kryptonite, to be though. Paid. I think a lot of what I do is like based in this idea that people have about influencers and content creators that like we should not be paid as much as we are and I think over time I've had to get over imposter syndrome because I now know that like this is the industry I'm in I'm looking at other people become extremely successful like looking at you know the Forbes 30 under 30 list with all uh, all the content creators they have listed and like looking at everyone's salary, you're like, wow, this is my industry. Like I do deserve to be compensated on the same level as my peers. And I think I've had to get over it just because of the industry that I work in. That's a great point. Ruby, there's like not as public of like information about the kind of work that you do. Also guys, it's I very... don't even know what I do. Mm -hmm. The emotional the emotional unavailability thing, though, like you got to get over. And I think, honestly, I agree. Like I have definitely dated majority of the people that I've dated are emotionally unavailable because I think in many ways I'm emotionally unavailable. And so I feel like that's I am emotionally available. Yeah. But I don't know. What if the guy all of a sudden becomes super emotionally available and then you might just get spooked? And you might ghost him for like a month like Kit does. I'm not like that. Yeah, I don't think you are either. But I do think that it took me meeting person or people that are um, emotionally available that I also find extremely attractive. Like, I yeah. think you just probably haven't met that many people that you find attractive that are emotionally available. Because it's kind of hard to do. It's a hard balance to be yeah. super hot up front oh, with yeah. your like intentions and your emotions. <laughs> it's more important to be hot than ever, guys. I think it's really hard to find someone that like you are attracted to that's like clear with their intentions. Yeah, I'm just kidding. You. No, yeah, I agree. And attraction is is multifaceted. Yeah, of course. So don't I'm worry. So, so don't toxic. worry, guys. I, I, I think I guess might be the Aren't problem. Aren't we all? I'm the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, so take your vitamin D. Any other topics? Set your New Year's resolutions, Jen? but actually have a game plan. Maybe we're, we'll workshop your game plan for next year. Yeah. Sure. I'm just going to start drinking more. Yeah, that sounds like a great, great Amazing idea. Amazing game plan. Thanks, guys. Kit, what's something about me and then about Jay mm -hmm. that you know that someone listening to this podcast might not have surmised thus far? Great question, Ruby. Um, and you guys answer too in the comments below. Drop a little. Oh, yeah, I know drop endless a guess. things about you that so this pick podcast something. doesn't know. Pick something that'll stir the pot the, that the listeners don't know. I think. Huh. I think you're a lot n nicer and more caring than you probably come off. And I think a lot of times when people meet you or maybe when they hear you on this podcast or see your social media, they probably think you're a little bit cold when in reality I know you, like the people that you care about and hold close to you, you would catch a bullet for them, you know, like you're very loyal and majority of the time have people's best interests at heart and will do a lot to support your friends and people that you love in your life. Jay. Jay. Slack. Thanks. Um, <laughs> what's something that I know about you that people don't know? Hopefully not too much. Don't expose him. I know. I was like thinking about some tea things, what? but I won't. Um, what could it possibly That you do? sleep with an eye mask. That's true. And earplugs. Yeah. So Leo, Leo DiCaprio. One thing about you, Ruby, that's notable is that you, you want to hear the truth. You want yes. to be told anything and everything. There's a Nietzsche quote that's like, you can measure the strength of someone's character by how much of truth they can take. I want, I always want the truth. Which should help you with your imposter syndrome, I think. 
because I think I think that's really rare is like how much truth you can handle. Like if you like there's something really really horrible being said about you, do you want to like you don't want to hear it or you do want to hear it? I think that says a lot about you. I want to know it all, but like I don't necessarily believe everything. Like What do you mean? Like in terms of the imposter syndrome conversation, yeah. like the people that I like value the most in my life and respect the most in my life look like just say like in a business sense, like they can give me the highest compliments and like tell me like or even if it's not a compliment, just like tell me the truth about what they think about me and it can yeah. be a positive. That doesn't mean like I believe it. That doesn't mean I take it as truth. Right. Yeah. I, I think when I say truth, I mean usually what's withheld from you is negative truth, not positive truth. People will typically tell you if there's some positive, really positive truth about People you. tell me negative truth. I ask for I it. I know. Exactly. That's my entire mm -hmm. point. That's but what I'm complimenting you on. But I'm saying that like... I don't really like... You don't believe it either way. Yeah. Interesting. That's how you deal with haters. Well, you guys know how I feel about haters. True. They're your motivators. How do you deal with haters? You have, Do you have haters, Kit? You get negative comments? I feel like this is such a cliche. Like, you're on social media. How do you deal with haters? I think it goes into this conversation about truth. And it's like there's a, there's a constructive, painful truth that is necessary and then there's just like hateful horrible sad truths that I've been that I've heard over my life that I could be very happy and live without knowing. Are those truths or are those just like hate? Haters. Like not actual truths? Um, just like toxic spew? No I, I think there's definitely truths that I've heard. You just would rather not. That I would just rather not. Just hear. totally unconstructive. Yeah. Interesting. I I like everything right where I can see it, no matter how bad it is. I'd rather know if something terrible has been said or exists or whatever. Do people hate you? Like, have you ever dealt with someone truly like hating on you? And that's a good question. Like, have you ever put enough of yourself out there? To be hated? That's such a good question. Not really, no. I think I'm pretty... I don't put myself out there that much. Like, obviously, Kit deals with haters. Like, I've dealt with haters online, like, at, when I've put myself out there. And also, like, I'm polarizing enough that, like, I know that there are people that I interact with who, like, truly dislike me. Yeah. And truly hate me. And, like, my whole life, like, not just, like as I've like spent more time on social media, but like in middle school and high school, like when you were young, did people ever hate you? No, I, I think I hated people more than people hated me. I also really care about like, I, I mean, to, to a certain extent, my life is organized around not having haters. Like I care about not having haters. I care about everyone being you happy. You want everyone to like you. It's sort of, yeah, it's sort of like, I don't know, it's kind of like the the way I was raised. In my I don't want everyone to like life, me. I don't think I have that many people that hate me. You're kind of the same way, too. I We're don't think, very similar, Jack. Yeah, we are. But I, part of the reason why I'm doing this podcast and part of the reason why I'm putting myself out there more and being less of a black box so of a person can hate you, is really. so that I can have people to hate me and hate them back. I'm just kidding. I... I, I've tried to hate people less. I've tried to be, I, I hate people. Like I, I don't really hate anyone. Yeah. You, we're opposites. You don't really hate anyone, but people hate you. And that's I, so not true. There are people that I strongly dislike. Okay. Well, but that's just like wordplay. Yeah. I think that there are people, I think I hate less people now than I have in my life. That's definitely true. Absolutely true. But you still hate people. I think some people are comfortable, most comfortable when they have haters. Like they actually, it would be weird to them to, to have none. And well, it's almost like, people don't people, hate you that you're not doing anything. Because that's a true belief of yours. That's a true belief. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. And like, I, I think a lot of times people see having haters as a good thing because like I'm relevant. But I don't have, I don't think I have anyone in my personal life that hates me. And I'm like so happy and comfortable with that. Your personal life being like your 10 best friends, your personal life being people you interact with on a people daily basis. People I interact with. I don't think people hate me. Or maybe I'm living in delusion. I think probably I think people some people you. are like, 
oh, this girl is just like a basic, whatever, whatever. Yeah, that's not hate. But I don't think that's hatred. Like vitriol, like people like yeah. genuinely cannot stand you. Yeah. I don't think I, you really I have don't that. Know. I don't know. Probably some people meet me and they're like, oh my God, I can't stand this girl. But I think that's on them more than it yeah. is because of things that I do. I mean, I don't like. That's how I see mm -hmm. the people who hate me. Mm -hmm. I'm not like trying to make people hate me. Yeah. I mean, even if I think about the people that I hate, I hate them because of my own shit, not mm -hmm. because of their shit. At least you're the like, super only people that I like. I'm thinking of someone recently that I've just like decided to like be done absolutely. Do I done know with. who that person is? Yeah, ab absolutely. Let's just go ahead and drop their name. Like they're dead to me, you know. Should we get it out in the open? You is know, it, is it the most? I wish you people could possible? see your face. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm, and, I'm completely in the dark here. Well, you kind of know because you know, like, you the know, backstory. Enough. Yeah, but even that, I don't. I think oh, in that yeah, case, sorry. like, I think in that case, like. That's not even my own shit. That's like that's that's not your own shit. That is a very totally. cause and effect reason to hate yeah. someone. And there are people who hate me. Yeah. Who there is a cause and effect reason that they hate me. Yeah. I think I'm thinking of like one or two very yeah. specific people. Go ahead and drop their name in the um, chat. No, <laughs> no. But I the people that I hate. Yeah. Sometimes there's not. There's one person I hate, and it's not their fault. But yeah. It's, it's just like their vibe is hate hateable <laughs> or what? It's just like they are like in a position where like I hate them because they're oh, in the same position. Oh, well, okay. Yes. Yes. It's more of a jealousy hate. Yes. And it's really not their fault. Yeah. A, a, a good jealousy hate is okay, I think. You think it's you not jealousy nemesis? though. Do you have a nemesis? I have no. a nemesis. You have a nemesis? Who is it? Can't tell you. Perfect. She definitely listens to this podcast. Oh, uh, Hundred percent. I I don't have a nemesis, but I feel like there there. Don't you feel like benefits. you're missing out on something? I know. I, I feel like there nemesis. could be benefits. If anyone wants to be my nemesis, uh, I'll start taking applications. Just leave I it don't in the comments think, below. I don't think it's necessary. Also, my nemesis, like I'm clearly like significantly like better and have surpassed them. That's not a real nemesis, though. Absolutely, they're from my my past life. A shadowed nemesis. I don't have a nemesis in this stage of my life. The art of of having a nemesis. Yeah. That should be your... Name of my memoir? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My alter ego is my nemesis. That's Whoa. too obscure. That's so deep. I really, like, there are certain people who are going to listen to this and be like, I know it. they're talking about me. <laughs> and they're going to be wrong. But, like, we're literally <laughs> they're not. Gonna be wrong. <laughs> we're literally not. Thanks for joining us, Kitty. Our first guest, Jay and I agreed that Kit had to be our first guest. Thanks so for having me, guys. We're so happy that she's here. Uh, where can we find you? You can if find me at know. Kit Keenan on all social platforms. And that is a slay. You can find us <laughs> I love how casually you said that. Best Village Podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. I'm still at Ruby Saracino on Instagram. And Jay, have it's you changed still, it yet? Unfortunately, Jay underscore easy with a Z. So uh, we're workshopping But he's that. putting himself out there to be hated, so feel free. Yeah. Um, Just don't hate me. You don't That's have to all. do it in the comments. You can send me the hateful DMs about him and send him the hateful DMs about right. me, and then we'll trade war stories. Follow us on our socials. Um, I want to feel cool, so I need some followers. You're Thanks, guys. Do you want to have anything else to add? That's it. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. bye.